What's up you guys, it's Jono! Today I'm gonna do a video about how to throw great throws and also why you would want to throw great throws in Pokemon Go. This is a video that I recorded a while back and I've been waiting to narrate it for quite a long time actually and um, I'm just gonna show off some different details of how I play. So first off, I've got touches shown, so that little white dot that you see is my finger, and when I'm multi-touching, you'll see it. And right now, I'm demonstrating how you execute the curveball. There are times when you may not spin the curveball enough to actually make it register as a curveball, and you'll know that it's registering a curveball when you see the little flashy lights there. Now, if you stop spinning it, you no longer have a curveball, and you have to re-spin it. You also have to go around in a circle a few times. It doesn't matter if it's a sideways circle, if it's a big, long, up and down circle, but if you just go side to side, you may accidentally not make a complete circle, and then you don't get a curveball. Now, there's another uh, caveat to this as well. If you spin the ball for too long, eventually it deregisters your curveball, and you have to let the ball go and start spinning it again and uh, that's just one of those weird things it may still show the um, the little sparkles there but sometimes it won't register the curveball sometimes I'm waiting to get that perfect moment to throw my ball and eventually uh, I wait too long and it doesn't register my curveball now that one did register the curveball so you can see you can go for pretty long but eventually I think it does stop sparkling or if it doesn't stop sparkling then there is definitely a place where it's too long and it no longer registers the curveball. That's been my experience at least. All right, so the biggest thing about great throws that I've noticed is that they are the most likely throw to get you a capture on the first try. Now, I thought for a long time that excellent throws would obviously be better and I uh, started practicing on how to get perfect excellent throws I got to where I can get about 50% excellent throws whenever I want to throw an excellent throw I can do it about one out of every two throws and that's really good I got to that point on great throws a long time ago I can get a great throw every single time I want to get a great throw with very low uh, error ratio but with the excellent throws I finally got to where I was executing them consistently and uh, basically more often than not and then I noticed that the Pokemon start to run they flee when you get an excellent throw so they're it doesn't make their flea rate increase but it makes their popping out of the ball rate increase I don't know why that is but I'll hit an excellent throw and it makes the Pokemon more likely to pop out of the ball uh, I did confirm that through my own testing. I don't have any proof on this video for it, but it is something that I definitely confirmed, and that's why I really want to focus on this Great Throws video, because Great Throws give you the most likelihood to catch the Pokemon, especially catching it on the first time. Now that's just based off of my own observations, but you guys know I play a lot of Pokemon Go, in an incredible amount of Pokemon Go, and once I started testing the excellent throws, I significantly noticed the rate of the Pokemon popping out of the ball going up. It doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna run, but if you guys watched my Vile Plume video the other night, I was hitting great throws on that Vile Plume over and over and over again, but then as soon as I hit him with that excellent throw, he popped out and he ran away from me. So I really think that that had something to do with the excellent throw. So I think it's worth mentioning that the great throw is the best throw and it's the most likely to get you a catch on the first try. And most often than not, I get my catch on the first try. Now, the next major important thing that I wanna talk about with great throws is the distance of the Pokemon. Some Pokemon are so close to you that they're really, really hard to get the great throw on. Pidgey is one of those, but I'm sure we've all practiced on enough Pidgeys to where it's not really that hard to get a great throw on a Pidgey. But think about a Weedle or a Caterpie, especially Weedle though. Weedle is so close and it's really, really hard to get those Weedles sometimes. So I'm gonna do a, a Weedle throw in this video. It's gonna come up in a little bit. Right now I'm capturing this Venonat. Venonat is a little bit further back and he's one of those bigger Pokemon. So he has that nice big circle and the circle is easier to hit. Now, Abra is another Pokemon where you don't want to get the excellent throw, you really want to get the great throw, because Abra's flea rate is something like 95%. It means if he busts out, you lost him. 
basically he's gone. So you really want to capture him on that first try. So I always try to get the great throw as well as use the berry just to make sure. And of course I always do my curveballs. I never skip the curveball. Now on that one it didn't register the curveball because I didn't spin the ball around enough. You have to go in a full circle a couple of times to get those sparkles. And once you get the sparkles that's when you know you have a curveball registered and it's okay to throw it. So Ekans is one of those Pokemon that I absolutely love catching. There is a hilarious trick shot on Ekans where when he's striking, you can throw the ball over his head and actually get the ball to fall inside of his coil. It'll go inside the circle where he is. I think that that trick shot is hilarious. I'll do a video on it one day, but this is my great throws video. So obviously I hit a great throw on the Ekans. And you notice in this video, a lot of the Pokemon are running. I'm hitting them with a great throw. They bust out and then they run. That's really not my experience. That rarely happens. But in this particular video, it did happen a lot. So I think it's worth mentioning. That's probably like the third one that it happened on. So here comes my Weedle catch. Weedle is really, really hard to get a great throw on. He's probably the hardest Pokemon to get a great throw on. Now I've got a special trick that I do. I tuck the ball down in the bottom right corner. That means that I'm gonna be able to throw just a tiny little barely throw and it's actually gonna uh, go that short distance less than it would go if I had thrown it up further up on the screen. Normally the ball starts up higher and then I lower it down to the bottom right corner and I barely flick the ball and I'm able to get the great throw on Weedle. It's a really, really hard thing to pull off, but that is my trick for getting a great throw on Weedle. And that's probably the hardest great throw to execute aside from some of the longer ones like Ponita and some of the flying ones like Ghastly and Pidgeot. Some of those are so far back that it's really hard to do it. Now while I catch this Eevee, I'm going to talk about flying Pokemon because I didn't get any flying Pokemon on this one. And I mean Pokemon that are actually flying like Pidgeotto, Pidgeot, Ghastly is another one that's very difficult to get a great throw on. The way that you throw the great throw on them is by throwing more up and less out. Now what do I mean by that? When I throw a curveball, I have to throw a certain amount off to the left of the screen and I have to throw a certain amount on the Y axis, which is up and down. You have your X axis left and right, Y axis up and down. And what I wanna get is basically a perfect 45 degree arc off of the left side of the screen. So equally off to the left and equally up to the top. So basically I throw it with a nice 45 degree angle sideways off the side of the screen. And sometimes my ball even goes off the screen, but then it comes back on the screen and it lands right in the center. And I can hit excellent throws that way. And I can hit great throws right in the middle that way as well. So that's my trick. That's how I throw my balls. But when you throw against a flying Pokemon, then you have to throw a little bit more up. So it's more like a 50% or a 55% or a 55 degree uh, if you want to say a degree so that's gonna be just a little bit more up and not as quite out to the left or if you're a southpaw and you throw left-handed you might throw to the right so that's why I'm not being specific about left or right because you may throw to the left or right but basically you're gonna throw more up now I wish I had some videos on that if you look at the ghastly nest videos that I took very recently I'm at Southside Park there's a ghastly nest you can see an example of how to execute those throws against flying Pokemon. I got a lot of great throws and I actually talk a lot during those videos about how I'm getting those great throws because it's really important to me the way that this game mechanics works. So this is probably the thing that I've spent the most time practicing in the game. It's the thing that I find to be the most important with reference to how you play the game and uh, how effective you are at catching Pokemon. I always hit the curveball, I always throw the great throw, and I've gotten to where now I can hit every single throw with a great throw, and uh, it's pretty effective for me. So I am gonna cut this video short, you guys. I have a little bit more footage, but I think that I've shown you that uh, the great throws are really, really easy to execute if you know how to do it. 
and hopefully you guys uh, got some benefit from looking at where my touches are. I actually showed my touches and you can see the line, like I was describing that 45 degree line that I throw to get my great throws. You can see that line in action with my uh, pointer on the screen in this video. So it's actually a really, really good case study on how to throw the great throws. And if you go back and rewatch the video, you can see the lines and you can see how I'm able to spin and then throw in one fluid motion and I get those great throws really quickly and sometimes I'm able to even throw what I call a predictive great throw which is when the enemy or the the Pokemon has its circle and then they do like their little combat move against you and that combat move makes the circle go away but then after the combat move is gone there's a really nice sweet spot where you can throw your pokeball and the circle's not there when you throw but it goes there after you're done throwing and then it lands on a great throw or sometimes on a nice throw too and I've gotten really good at throwing those predictive great throws where I know how big the circle was before they started attacking and then I know how big it's going to be after they start attacking and I throw before they're done attacking and then I hit on the great throw when the circle becomes available. It's a really sweet move and once you get really good you'll get to the point where you can do it and uh, basically I find that that is like the trick shot of the century. It feels good when I'm like yeah I got that great throw even though I didn't know how big the circle was. It's a predictive great throw and uh, it's basically the advanced level but this is actually the end of my footage here uh, I only captured about 10 minutes 11 minutes of footage to show you guys how to do great throws so thanks everybody for watching thanks to all my awesome subscribers I hope that this helped you and uh, please post in the comments if it did help you thanks again everybody and peace